Hi everyone, I'm Brenda. Welcome to Phoenix Furniture Studio. In today's video, I'm going to be working on this gorgeous sideboard. I'm going to be working on it as a commission for a client. So I'm going to be taking it from this orange sideboard into this really pretty greyish neutral coloured sideboard with the whitewashed drawer fronts and the whitewashed top as well so if this is something that you'd like to see then please stick around and I'll walk through all the steps of how I achieved this with her sideboard. Let's get started with the video. I love using this Bosch mini drill when I'm taking off hardware. It fits in small drawers um, and it's not too aggressive for removing the screws. It comes with a little selection of screw heads as well. And then I just pop the screws in the back of the hardware and that way it keeps it all together and nothing gets lost. I'm going to pop that drawer out now and I'm just going to label it on the bottom as the right. I'm not going to bother labelling this drawer because it's obvious where it goes. It's this only large middle drawer. And then this one's just going to get an owl for left. Where we've taken the screw out, yeah, you can see this is still attached. And if you look closely, there's little nails holding these in. So what we're gonna have to do is pry those off to be able to remove these pieces. So I'm just starting with a scraper, which has got a fairly slim profile, trying to get it behind and then lever it out, just slow and gently, so as not to damage anything. There we go, it should just pop off down there as well. And there you go, it's all removed. And as you can see, there's a bit of dust and dirt underneath there, which is why we remove it in order to clean. My next task on this sideboard is going to be stripping the top. We're going for a raw wood top and a painted bottom. Looking at the finish on here, it looks like to be quite a thick varnish, quite a deep wood grain. So I think the best thing we're going to do to remove the varnish is go in with paint stripper first and then sand out the rest. So I've got my paint stripper here. This is Paint Panther. I've got my mask, my gloves, and a chip brush just to apply the stripper with. So, let's get stripping. I 
I like to agitate the stripper just before I'm going to scrape it off just to really make sure that it's pulling up all that varnish so when it comes time to scrape a lot of the work's already been done especially when there's wood grain like on this one right let's get all this goop off I'm back in the workshop today and we're going to be sanding this down. So we've stripped it all with the chemical stripper, we've given it a wash with some mineral spirits. It's completely dried so most of the varnish has been removed. So now what we're going to do is give it a sand just to remove what's left of the varnish and to get it ready for putting our paint wash on. As you can hopefully see from here, this is just a really thin veneer over um, press board. That's real wood, that edging there, that edging there. But all of this surface here, up into the edge on that side, all of that is a veneer top. So I'm going to need to be really careful when I'm sanding. Otherwise, I might go through that veneer to the press board underneath and we don't want that. That's just more work for us to repair. So I'm going to start with 180 grit and go slowly with that um, and see how it comes up. That's all the sanding of the top done. So I'm just going to take this little sponge pad here, it's 120 grit, and I'm going to go over all these edges here now just to give those a sand as well. I really like these um, sponge pads because they flex to the shape so I know I'm not going to damage the profile by using these. Right, that's all the dust wiped off of there. So we're gonna be ready to go in with our paint wash now. I've just noticed this here, which I think was there already, but I may have made it worse by sanding. So it's just a little bit where the veneer's gone through. And that's what I mean by blowing through the veneer. You go through to the press board underneath. So I'm just gonna use this little furniture repair kit and I'm just going to touch that up because the paint wash is going to hide a lot of that but I want to give it an even base to match up to. Now I'm not the best at this but this is how I would do it. So I've got a yellowy tone here because obviously there's yellow tones in that wood. I've got a creamy beige colour. Again, those sort of creamy tones in the wood. And I'm going to get some of that on there. 
and you always want to match to the sort of weight tone of the wood because it goes a little bit darker so I'm just going to mix up those two to get um, an in-between shade and then I'm just going to lightly pop that over like that. So we're going to build up the layers here because you're not going to get a perfect match first time or it's highly unlikely that you'll get a perfect match first time. You, you want to try and match to all the different tones in the wood. So that will be our starting point. And then a little bit more of that creamy colour, I think. There we go. So I think that's quite a good starting base. The good thing about using this bristly brush is it gives it a bit of texture, a bit like wood grain. Let's spray that with a bit of lacquer now. So this is just a bit of varnish, which I'm going to spray over that first coat. And leave that to dry a bit. Okay, I'm going to pop the next layer on now, which is going to be with a little bit of this orangey colour. Only because when you wet this down, it's got this sort of orangey tone to it. So I'm going to go with the yellow. Just mix that till I'm happy with it. More yellow, I think. And just feathering out the edges as well because you don't want anything too harsh. Another coat on there. The final step is going to be just to add some of that wood grain pattern back in. So I'm going to go with a, a darker colour for that. Um, yeah, that is quite dark, so I'm going to get some of that on there. That is black, so very dark. Here's a nice dark brown. That might be slightly better. So, same brush, just dip, 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 dip. A little tiny bit of black. And I'm just ever so slightly going to feather that in. There, so I think I'm quite happy with that. And I'm just going to add another coat just to see how it looks. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That is going to be good enough for us to be able to do the paint wash on. So chuffed with that. To do the paint wash on the top, which we've sanded down now, I'm going to be using French Chic in the shade Cool Beans, which is a lovely greyish colour. And I'm going to be mixing that with some water. I'm going to start with a 50-50% ratio, see how that looks. We're going to just use a brush. This is just a, a lick two inch brush and we're going to apply it on the surface and wipe it back pretty much straight away so that it doesn't um, absorb too much and then depending on how that looks then we'll just add layers as we go rather add thin layers and and do multiple layers to get the look that you want than go in too heavy first time and have to sand it back again so let's get mixing and paint washing
this area here where we did the touch-up work and sprayed with the varnish that's obviously resisting the paint because of the varnish surface so I'm just going to take a 600 grit sanding paper and just scuff up that just a tiny bit just so that it's not resisting the paint That first layer seemed to dry quite quickly. So I've only just finished wiping that first one off and I'm gonna go in with my second coat already. And with this coat, I'm just gonna let it sit just for a minute or two longer than I did for that first coat. That first coat acted as a bit of a, a slip coat primer for this, this coat now. So it's not the completely raw wood surface, which just sucks up the water in the paint. There is gonna be a bit of a barrier now between the wood and the paint. So by just leaving it for, say, an extra 45 seconds to a minute, it just lets it penetrate that first layer of paint as well. Okay, that's been about an extra minute. I'm just going to roll my cloth up. Start with the edges. And then just running with the wood grain. And by wiping with the wood grain it makes it a lot less obvious that it's a paint wash uh, the wood grain hides any strokes that your cloth might make try and get it as smooth as possible regardless but it just gives a much cleaner finish by going with the wood grain also you might need to fold your cloth around as well as it gets uh, more saturated with paint that will affect how it wipes away the paint wash so just keep refolding that good morning it is saturday and i'm back in the workshop so that i can work on this again. What I'm going to be doing today is stripping those drawers there, just the top drawers that you can see, and whitewashing those as well. My client wants to see how they look whitewashed with the rest of the dresser painted before deciding if she wants to paint those top drawers. So that's the plan for this morning. Let's get going. So we did the whitewashing of the top last night and there you can see how it looks this morning. It's come out really nicely. There's just this little spot here that I need to do some work on just to blend it in a bit better but overall really happy with how that's looking. Right let's get on with stripping then. To stop the stripper from leaking through these two handle holes, I'm just going to place some green tape along the back here to add act as a barrier. And I'm going to do that to all the drawers. Right, those are all done now. I don't want, really want stripper collecting in these either. So, let me have a look. 
Mm, too small and too big. Um, oh well, I'm just going to have to clean it out. Okay, that, leave that for 10 to 15 minutes just to work its magic and then we'll come back and scrape it. You can see where it's already starting to get a little bit gelatinous is where it's pulling the varnish off. Now that we've finished scraping most of the stripper off, what we're going to do is we give them a good rinse with some mineral spirits and some steel wool. What this does is it'll neutralize the stripper that's left and clean off any excess so that we can move on to sanding once it's dry. With the 4 aught or 4 zero fine steel wool, it's great at removing whatever varnish is left, but not scratching because it's not too abrasive. Don't be shy with your mineral spirits. You need a good amount to effectively rinse your piece. So we're going to let those drawers dry fully now and then move on to sanding and I am just going to clean up. Because I'm going to be paint washing the front of the drawers I'm going to tape off all around here so if any of the paint splashes on the drawer it won't be too much of a, a clean up. So yeah, just gonna tape around all the edges and then get on with paint washing this. All taped up. with the grain. I know this is worn that so it's a bit difficult, a bit different. There we go. I'm happy with that as coat one. Um, I'll need to go over that with another coat though. So I'm not really waiting in between coats. I'm just gonna get the second coat on now. I'm going to leave that one for sort of 30 seconds or so. Right, let's get to wiping this one back. Because of this walnut grain, I'm going in this, um, in this motion to wipe it off so that there's no harsh lines because the grain is all over the place. By wiping straight across, it's creating lines that don't look right. So just sort of buffing it in more than anything. I think I'm probably gonna go in with one more coat, just to mirror how it looks on the top. So again, going straight back in, not waiting. And then again, leaving that for sort of say 30 seconds. So initially wiping the bulk off like that, but you can see those lines don't look right. So, bring in again, but more. Of that motion. There we go. I like how that looks now. So I'm going to leave that to dry.
I've now finished giving this a scuff sand on the bottom half where I'll be painting with 120 grit sandpaper. But because there's quite a lot of these details and curvy bits as well, I also want to spray it with this liquid sander and that'll just degloss any varnish that is left. But before I do that, I want to tape off and seal the top which has been whitewashed with some plastic wrap. So I'll do that first, give everything a spray with the uh, liquid sander which I've done, it's about two parts to about 20 parts water. I'll spray it all, leave it for a minute or two and then wipe it off and then give it a rinse with some clean water then we'll be ready to prime. This is just clean uh, warm water which I'm going to rinse the piece down with now and get all the liquid sander off. Let that fully dry and then we'll be ready to prime. We're ready to start spraying the primer now. In preparation, I've taped off the insides of the drawers there because it goes straight into the cupboard down below. So if I was to leave those open, the overspray would go into the cupboards. And I've also taped up all the hinges so that they don't get paint on them. A good idea for these is whenever I decoupage a piece of furniture and I have scraps, I keep a hold of the scraps because one of these is bound to be the right size for a drawer and you can use that to seal off a drawer like that and it just reduces the amount of paper you're wasting and prevents you from using sort of plastic for those sorts of things. So just a tip in case you use wallpaper to decoupage your furniture, keep a hold of your scraps. I'm gonna wheel that into there now and get priming. This Wagner is new to me, so not new. Um, I bought it second hand off of Facebook Marketplace. This is the Wagner W890 Flexio, and I think it's similar to, is it the Flexio 5000 that you get in America? So I just thought I'd try it out, um, hopefully, it is all in working order. It was sold as in working order. It's got the long hose and then the sprayer and then this acts as the, the turbine for the HVLP spraying. So I'm just going to set that all up for my primer. The primer that I'm going to be using is... So it's this Zinzabin Aqua which is a water-based sealer, not sealer, water-based primer, but it's got the stain blocking and odor blocking qualities that the bin shellac has. And I quite like this one because it's easy cleanup. So I'm gonna get that into the sprayer and see how we go. little bit of water in there and then see what sort of consistency that comes out as. I'm really happy with that consistency. It's like a single cream, not too runny and not too gloopy. When it hits the paint in the pot, it doesn't collect on the surface, it just goes into the paint straight away. If you had like little worm trails collecting on the top, you'd need to water it down a bit more. So I'm happy with that to start spraying.
I really like how that spray feels and the spray on it. The only thing it doesn't have, which my other HVLP sprayer has, which is by no means an expensive one, it's just a cheap one, is that you can choose if you want the spray to be in a thinner or wider spray pattern. And this I just haven't figured out how you do it on this one. But other than that, I actually really like the, how it feels. I'm a bit worried because I've sprayed it and the primer's doing this. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but that normally happens if there's something on the surface that it doesn't like. And I'm not quite sure why. I have fully cleaned it, scuff sanded it, cleaned it again with a liquid sander, rinsed all of that off, and yet it's still doing this like coagulating thing. So depending on how this dries, I may just need to sand it down smooth again and go in with Zinzabin, which is the oil-based primer. There might be something left on this surface that the water base in this primer doesn't like. It's like that oil and water mix, which is really strange because I prepped this in the same way I would prep any other piece. All right, I'll have to leave this to dry. There's nothing I can do about this now. And we'll come back to this in a few days. Where we left off the last time we were in the workshop, I showed you that this had sort of done that, like, like there was an oil mix in it. This was a water-based uh, primer. So all I've done is I've let it dry fully and I've gone over and sanded that texture. And I think what's happened, the reason why it's done that is if you recall, I said that this was new to me, but not new. And I think the last person who used this sprayed an oil-based fence coat using it. And even though I gave it a really good wash with hot soapy water, I think that was still, there was some contaminants in this part of the gun. So I have a spare gun, this one, which has never been used, it is brand new. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the primer in this gun and spray it and see what happens. If it is all fine, then I know it was that other gun that was the issue. If we have the same issue again, then I know it's the piece and we can go from there. So let's get on with our second coat of primer. I can't recall where I left you yesterday, but after I'd sprayed the second coat of the Aqua Primer, the same thing started happening where it was um, almost separating from the surface like you would if you were applying uh, water to oil. So I rubbed off the little bit that I'd done as a tester and then I use Zinza Cover Stain, which is this one. And that's oil-based, and that's like my fail-safe primer. I will use that whenever I've got a tricky surface that needs adhesion or stain blocking or any, anything like that. This, this is my go-to product. So I applied two coats of that yesterday and lightly sanded in between. I've given it another sand now so that it's smooth. I've given it a wipe down with a damp cloth. So it's all ready and prepped and I'm gonna start spraying my paint. I'm gonna be using French Chic in the shade Cool Beans. It's a lovely like neutral grayish color. So I'm gonna pop that in my Wagner paint sprayer and I'm gonna spray it and fingers crossed, it goes on as it should. As I say, that primer is my fail safe, end of the world primer. <laughs> Let's load up the spray gun and fingers crossed, it all goes smoothly. It is quite a thick paint, so I will be watering it down. I just kind of eyeball the consistency 
and add water if I need it or add paint if I need it but bearing in mind it's always easier to add extra water not so easy to take water away so if you're not sure rather add too little to start with and then add more especially if you're on your last bit of paint and you've got no more paint to thicken it up with I like it to be the consistency of single cream so not too runny but still loose at the same time there we go perfect right so let's get spraying with that nozzle onto there direction nozzle then that onto there and tighten not so tight that you can't move the nozzle and then for that I like that to be paid pointing towards where the nozzle sprays out because I tend to spray down which means when I'm spraying the paint is collecting the paint is collecting there where the nozzle is this has had two coats of matte varnish now and it looks gorgeous so to finish off the drawers I'm going to remove each one I'm going to touch up the sides with some of this zesty lemon balm which smells amazing that's what it looks like and the darker wood on the inside I'm just going to go over with a little bit of restorer finish just to get it looking tip top and then attach the handles and that'll be the drawers done. <laughs> 